Hello and welcome to Capital Ideas TV. I'm Mark Bunting. There are a few words that are sure to grab any investor's attention, such as mergers and acquisitions. A takeover can deliver hefty returns for early investors, and there's no better place to find them than in the healthcare and biotech industry. The risks of investing in this space may be high, but the rewards can be even higher. Take a look at the juicy prices healthcare buyouts command on the public market, courtesy of Dealogic. The average one-month premium on deals larger than $100 million was a whopping 80% last year. And while that may be a statistical outlier, the average one-month premium hovers around 40% and hasn't been lower than 30% since 1995. This chart from Bloomberg underscores that point. Biotech companies typically garner higher-than-average revenue multiples, even ones that don't have a product on the market yet. The reasons are twofold. One, research and development is extremely costly, time-intensive, and inherently uncertain, so large healthcare firms don't want to bear the brunt of that. And two, they're desperate for new products with fat profit margins with few competitors. Lexagene Holdings is a biotech firm that could be on the verge of a buyout. The company is developing a pathogen testing device that delivers results within an hour rather than days, slashing the cost of screening. Lexagene's CEO and founder, Dr. Jack Regan, has a timeline for when M&A suitors will likely be lining up. So, Dr. Jack, for our viewers who may not have seen you before, you're uh, President Daryl Rebick on our show. Uh, remind us about your, your pathogen detection technology at Lexagene Holdings and how it's different and uh, why you think it's a game changer. Yeah, we're building what's called a sample to answer genetic analyzer. What this instrument is designed to do is to process raw samples and spit out a genetic answer. It'll return answers in about one hour's time. It's also designed to screen for many different pathogens at once. And so between those features of time to result, screening for many pathogens, and the fact it's extremely flexible in regards that you can detect almost any genetic target you're interested in, it's actually a winning solution for many different markets. So currently, uh, the, the, the systems being used now takes several days to, uh, to, to find pathogens, correct? Right. Right now, we're really competing against very antiquated technologies. Um, mostly, we're competing, about, uh, competing against culture. What culture is, is when you collect a sample, you ship it off to a reference laboratory, they actually put it into an enrichment broth, it takes 24 hours to grow up, they analyze it afterwards. As a result, um, it takes two or three days, sometimes five days to get a result back. Our value proposition is to place an instrument at the site of sample collection so that the actual end user who's collecting the sample can generate a result within an hour, act on that data, and go from there. Your company recently uh, got some positive results from a clinical study having to do with dogs. So uh, tell us about that uh, breakthrough and why it's important. Yeah, it was really a monumental achievement for the company. I mean, at the start of the company, we were really just a patent and an idea. And so now we've reduced that patent into a working instrument. Um, and that's hard. It takes a lot of uh, development work on the engineering, software, firmware, and application side to get to that milestone. We've done that. We end up analyzing 107 different um, dog urine samples, looking for um, urinary tract infections. And we found that we were 97.5% concordant with the reference laboratory generated results. But again, we're providing that answer in an hour versus you know, days that it takes for a reference lab to generate that result. And we also found that we can detect antibiotic resistance uh, factors. This is extremely important because right now, you know, pets or the owners bring their pets into the hospital for a diagnosis. The veterinarian doesn't know how to treat them and they're really empirically diagnosed. That means they guess. Unfortunately, they guess wrong a significant percentage of the time. So what we provide is not only the answer as to what's causing the disease, but also whether or not some antibiotic resistance factors might be present, which help guide them in prescribing the right therapy for their patient. So you're targeting the uh, veterinary market, which I understand is about a $4 billion market, and then you've got many other sectors that you can look at, food safety, right. uh, and we were talking off air about uh, you're, you're, look, you're just starting to look into uh, the possibility of using your technology in, uh, in the cannabis sector. Yeah, correct. I mean, you know, right now, at the core, our technology is a genetic analyzer. Uh, that means we can detect anything with the genome. We chose uh, the veterinary uh, space first because it, it's an underserved uh, market. Right now, there's no good technology servicing that market, which is fast. And so we want to sort of have fir first to market advantage in that space. But as you mentioned, right now, as we're generating data, we can very easily start exploring other markets. We've always felt we offer a great value proposition for food safety. 
food safety is one of these uh, industries which is really desperate for innovation. Um, you're sh surely aware of the fact that you know, food safety recalls are in the news weekly. And so what they're clamoring for is a more sensitive, faster way to detect pathogens. And again, back to Lexagene's value proposition, we return an answer very, very quickly, and we have a breadth of detection. What this means is we can look for not just E. coli, but Salmonella, Listeria, Campylobacter, um, all these other pathogens which potentially could cause illness. This is important because in food safety you have the tendency just to look for what you're most likely to, to have as a contaminant, but what if you miss something that you're not looking for? So our value proposition again is a very cost affordable um, result which looks for all of the major foodborne pathogens in a timely manner so that the food producer can really best mitigate their risk. We want to inform them as best we can because genetics is extremely sensitive. All right, so give us a timeline for Lexagene to commercialize this technology. Yeah, so right now we're just generating a lot of data, you know, making the instrument do what it's supposed to do, and we are advancing our, our prototype development to make a very easily manufacturable instrument. We call it the LX2. We'll have the LX2 in the hands of beta testers Q3 of this year. We'll collect some feedback from the beta testers, uh, make some, hopefully, some very small, minor software tweaks based on their feedback, and we expect to be commercial within the year. Now, uh, as far as uh, this technology and how attractive it may be to other companies, you've talked about the fact uh, quite openly that it's the type of technology that a, a bigger firm just doesn't have the time or, or interest to, to come up with, and that, that you're, a, you're a, probably a takeout candidate, a candidate eventually. So uh, have you had exploratory talks, and, and what's the timeline there? We have. Uh, there's many big strategics out there, big biotech companies, which lack sample data solu solutions in their portfolio. And it offers them a great um, way to really complement what they offer the customer. Traditionally, the bigger companies um, tend to wait to make an acquisition offer until you have the instrument in the hands of customers. For us, that would be uh, Q3 this year. Um, generally, there's a window of opportunity where the valuation of the company is still low enough where a strategic will come in and make an acquisition offer. That's generally, once it's in the hands of customers, all the way till about you know, six months after your commercial. So we view really between Q3 of this year um, and Q2 of next year to be a very pivotal point for us where potentially will be acquired. And what's your impression of how the stock market uh, is looking at Lexagene right now and, and what are some of the catalysts to, to get the stock to a higher level? So right now I feel, truthfully, we're actually undervalued. Um, there's been a long time for us getting to this point of generating some data. And now that we are there, it allows us to very, very quickly target these other markets which are extremely important. One of the things that I think investors are tired of is this idea that we just do the veterinary space. That's not true. We're a genetic analyzer company. We can do many different things. And because we're an open access platform, what that means is that the customer has the ability to modify and design the test result for what they're interested in looking for. Traditional companies that build devices have what we call a closed access system. You can't change what you're looking for. So once we go to market, the customer will be able to buy our technology and say we're just doing veterinary and just doing food at the time. Say a customer wants to buy the technology and is interested in looking at cannabis, right? You know, we can provide them the assays to look for cannabis. And so on the cannabis side, you know, not only do you have the food safety side of is there yeast or, or fungus or molds, you know, contaminating the plant um, and potentially would be uh, an infectious agent for the people taking cannabis, particularly those with HIV or, or cancer, but you also have the response to the drug, which is very important. So somebody could buy our technology, load assays is important to actually characterizing your response to the drug, which helps them better predict, okay, how should we dose this, this particular patient? Now, uh, Dr. Jack, lastly here, you've touched on a few of the points here, but, but why do you think now is the time uh, for investors to, to pay attention and, and put uh, Lexagene on their radar, and if not, uh, buy the stock? If you look back at the history of the company, we've gone through the hardest part. The hardest part is starting the company, getting the capital, the risk capital required to get to the point you have a working uh, instrument and you're generating data. We've passed that point. We've, we're fully de-risked. We're at the point where we can churn out data, people can send us samples, and we can provide them a result. Now is relatively the easy part uh, of reducing it to an instrument which is very easily manufactured and begin selling it. And, and that's just a pure engineering um, exercise and we're halfway through the point of getting our LX2 into the hands of customers, which again is Q3 this year.